Russian police have arrested a woman who allegedly delivered a bomb that killed a famous war blo blogger in St. Petersburg. Russia's State Investigative Committee has ordered a murder investigation. 25 people were injured in the blast. Russia also accused Ukraine security services linked to Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny to, uh, of being behind the bomb attack. Russia's Wagner paramilitary group has said that it has taken legal control of Ukraine's Bakhmut after it captured the city hall. The battle for Bakhmut has been raging for months. In a latest video, Wagner's head was seen holding a Russian flag. He said the flag would be planted on Bakhmut city hall. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has said that the military situation in, the, in Bakhmut is especially hot. Ukraine's army has said that it still holds the city. Experts say that Bakhmut carries little strategic value. However, the fight for the city is the longest battle in the Ukraine war. Six people have been killed as Russian missiles hit residential areas near Bakhmut in uh, the eastern part of Ukraine. The attack came after Russia took over the rotating presidency of the United Nations Security Council. The move angered Ukraine and its allies that have sanctioned Russia. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has hailed the resistance against what he called the biggest force against humanity of our time. Russia will deploy its tactical nuclear weapons close to Belarus's border with NATO members. This is likely to escalate tensions between Russia and the Western nations. Last month, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced the plan to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, which is a Russian ally. Putin has said that the construction of storage facilities for the weapons in Belarus will be completed by the 1st of July. German Economy and Energy Minister Robert Habeck made a surprise visit to Kyiv. The aim was to discuss Ukraine's post-war reconstruction. Habeck travelled by train and was accompanied by a small business delegation. He reportedly said that he was there to signal to Ukraine that it will be victorious and that it will be rebuilt. He also said that Ukraine will be an economically strong partner in the future. French President Emmanuel Macron and European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen will visit China. The two leaders will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping. The war in Ukraine is likely to be among the major talking points. China's foreign ministry has said that the main reason behind tensions on the Korean peninsula are joint military drills by the US, South Korea and Japan. The navies of the three countries are set to hold anti-submarine exercises. South Korea said that the aim is to better counter North Korea's evolving nuclear and missile capabilities. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen is in the Central American nation of Belize, set to spend three days in the country. Tsai is scheduled to meet Belize's Prime Minister. Belize is one of the two remaining allies Taiwan has in Central America. Before this, Tsai spent three days in Guatemala, the other ally. This trip comes after Honduras established diplomatic ties with China. Police in New, York, in New York City have set up metal barriers around Trump Tower and blocked roads near the Manhattan Criminal Courthouse. This comes as they brace for potential protests after former US President Donald Trump was indicted over hush money payments to a porn star ahead of the 2016 presidential election. Trump is due to be arraigned at the Manhattan Courthouse. Finland's National Coalition Party leader has claimed victory in a tightly fought parliamentary election. The country's Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, of the Social Democrat Party, conceded defeat. The NCP has led in polls for almost two years now. The party promised to curb spending and stop the rise of public debt. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi has said that the hijab is the law in Iran. His remarks came after a viral video showed a man throwing yogurt at two unveiled women. The incident is believed to have happened in the city of Shandiz. Judicial authorities in Shandiz issued arrest warrants for the man. 
protests against Israel's judicial overhaul plan show no signs of abating. More than 150,000 people attended anti-government protests over the weekend. This comes after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu suspended the reforms. Critics say that the reforms are a threat to the court's independence. Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido is accusing the country's president, Nicolas Maduro, of planning to issue an arrest warrant against him. Guaido said that Maduro plans to arrest other opposition leaders as well. Guaido said, and I quote, if you arrest me, the world will see you as what you are, a dictator. Guaido has been barred by the government from holding public posts. However, he has expressed his desire to run in the primary election in October this year. Pope Francis led a Palm Sunday service. This came a day after he was discharged from a hospital. The Pope addressed a crowd of more than 30,000 people. He had been admitted following a severe bout of bronchitis. The Pope had complained of breathing difficulties before being admitted to the hospital. People in Paris voted against renewing the licenses of free-floating electric scooter operators in the city. This makes Paris the first European capital to completely ban the service. 89% of the city's registered voters cast ballots against electric scooters. Officials considered banning the rental electric scooters due to concerns over public safety. A hailstorm has hit the US state of Texas. Hailstones were as big as golf balls there. The National Storm Prediction Center has